Sorry, I've uh, got to uh, delete um, the previous day's filming, so I, I ran out of uh, memory in my camcorder. Uh, I'm filming in high definition, so it just gobbles up gigabytes of, uh, of memory. So, okay, so uh, where was I? So I was talking about uh, computability. So it's, um, yeah, it's a fascinating uh, mathematical pure math exercise to prove that uh, certain things, certain uh, tasks, cannot be computed. Uh, probably the most famous one, jumping ahead quite a bit, is uh, Turing. You'll hear that name a lot this course. Uh, the famous British uh, mathematician, logician, computer science pioneer, uh, Turing, T-U-R-I-N-G. Uh, his famous uh, halting, you know, to halt, to stop, the halting problem. And you'll, hear, you'll hear that a lot uh, this course. Uh, the, the halting problem is unsolvable, cannot, cannot be computed, it's impossible. And you can prove that it's impossible, <laughs> which, which is interesting. So there are some things, you know, take, home, take home message, uh, there are some things that cannot be computed. Right? So that's the topic of computability, you know, is, is some task able to be computed, right? Computability. And complexity uh, is a sort of, it's sort of linked to computability. Um, for those tasks that are computable, that, that can be computed, uh, that can be calculated, that can be solved, if you like, um, some of them seem to be fairly easily done. You know, they don't take a, a huge amount of effort on the part of the computer to solve. But other problems just, just slurp up huge amounts of time and memory and so on. They are hard problems, you know, difficult problems to solve. So this topic, um, you know, one of the big three of the course, uh, complexity theory, uh, asks the question, uh, you know, what is it about a particular problem that makes it easy or hard for a computer to solve. Right? So talking about easiness and hardness, and I'm being rather vague at the moment, but we're just starting. Um, talking about that uh, easiness or hardness to, uh, for a computer to solve a problem, that is the, the topic of complexity theory. Okay? So there, there are three the three main areas, uh, main parts, and each part in the textbook um, has several chapters. Okay? So the, 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 the book's divided into three main parts, and, and one preliminary part, which is what, what we're starting on right now, which, you know, lecture zero, which is uh, introduction, uh, presenting to you uh, notations, uh, the basic mathematical tools you'll need, uh, like later sessions on this board. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, set theory, stuff like that. So uh, the, basic, the basic tools that you will need uh, to, to go through this course. Okay? Uh, Alright, so uh, this theory of computation here is, you know, just reading off a little bit. Um, so a sort of critical question that these, these three uh, link to is, what are the fundamental capabilities and the limitations of computers. In other words, what, what, what can computers do, and what, what can't they do? And uh, you know, what, what are they capable of? What can they do? What can't they do? So that that sort of question is you know, basic to uh, computer theory. Okay. And uh, this this question, this basic question, um, got thought about. Well, it's debatable. Uh, I suppose the the father, the real father of uh, computers, was Babbage. Uh, like a century, pretty well, a century earlier, the uh, British uh, mathematics professor at uh, Cambridge University. He had the same. He held the same chair, uh, professorship, as uh, Newton, and he was uh, obsessed with, with uh, the idea of computers. And so he tried to design them, but he never actually got one built because he kept changing to a new design until eventually uh, the government got fed up funding him money, so they stopped. So uh, never got... He's, he's a, 
his machines never actually got built, which is a sort of tragedy because computers could have come into the world uh, almost a century earlier than they did. Anyway, so Babbage probably thought about these questions, but uh, at least uh, in the 30s, uh, various mathematical logicians, people who did mathematical logic, uh, interested in questions of uh, the foundations of mathematics, that, that kind of people. Uh, so some big names, um, Gödel. Now, uh, Kurt, K-U-R-T, that's his uh, personal name, Gödel, G-O, umlaut, in other words, two dots over the O, Gödel, G-O, dot dot, or umlaut, as the Germans say, D-E-L, Gödel. Uh, famous name in uh, probably the greatest logician either who has ever lived, or since Aristotle, I suppose. So, you yeah, know, right up there. One of the, well, if not the top, um, one of the most brilliant minds of the 20th century. Uh, you yeah, know, he was interested in the foundations of mathematics. And he had, one of his uh, famous proofs was that um, there, there uh, you, you have a set of axioms in, in a branch of math, let's say. So there, there will be statements that you consider to be true, but, but that you cannot prove that they follow from those axioms. Okay? So there's a kind of, uh, the, in a sense, those axioms are incomplete. There, there are not enough of those axioms to give you the statement that you know is true. So, so you, well, okay, well, you, you just add some more axioms to allow you to deduce this statement. But then uh, there will be other statements that, it, with this new set, this augmented set of axioms, so this new statement is still unprovable from, um, from your new augmented uh, set of axioms. So, uh, you know, that, when, um, that was, what, early 30s, when Gödel came out with his famous incompleteness theorem. Now, I'll be covering it, I'll be teaching it at, uh, I think, uh, M2 level, second year master's level, and it's very pure math, math, uh, let's see, I could, I could show you the book, just, just a minute. So if you've heard, if you've heard about Gödel, his famous uh, incompleteness theorems. Uh, you may want to follow uh, the computer th theory course courses uh, at least to second year master's level. And the text that I'll be using for M2 level on this uh, computer theory, and it's it's pretty well math by that stage, um, is called Computability and Unsolvability. The author is Martin Davis, and here's the text. And as part of this, this, this course, uh, M2 level course, will be uh, the study of uh, Gödel's famous theorem. Now, Gödel wasn't the only one who was interested in the foundations of mathematics. And, uh, uh, well, there are other big names, uh, like a bit earlier in the century, a few decades, there was a famous German mathematician called Hilbert. Uh, the same Hilbert of Hilbert's space in quantum mechanics and so on. Um, so he he wanted a proof that uh, mathematics was consistent. In other words, uh, a proof that uh, you know, given a certain set of axioms for basic mathematics, pure mathematics, that uh, it would be impossible to derive contradictory. Uh, theorems, you know, deductions, conclusions, uh, to show that that, that, would, um, that would be impossible, you know, prove that it would be impossible. And uh, so he suggested a, a kind of procedure, like, like turning a handle, cranking out, uh, you know, given, given the axioms, you could prove uh, you know, any derivable statement. So that was, you know, that kind of thinking was very much in the air uh, around that period. And a famous young uh, British logician, mathematician, uh, Turing, uh, got, you know, got very interested in this problem. 
And so he invented uh, a fictional machine, now called the Turing machine, and we'll definitely talk about that in this course, the Turing machine. And uh, it was kind of uh, on paper, you know, a theoretical device that would allow you to uh, compute with. And uh, he went on to show that uh, using this device there are some things that he showed mathematically are impossible to compute. And, and he and another guy, a guy called Church, um, C-H-U-R-C-H, you know, like, like the religion church, uh, you know, um, came out with sort of similar ideas. So, so in the 30s, a lot of people um, were thinking about, you know, what, what, can, you con what can you compute? Uh, what is computable and what are the limits of, of, of uh, computing? And interestingly, uh, the, that theory that, that's really more uh, from pure mathematics and logic, right, that, uh, that motivated people to, to uh, say, well, these hypothetical, these on paper, these, these toy, if you like, uh, computing devices could actually be built. I mean, you know, become a piece of engineering, not, not just a piece of uh, mathematical theory. And uh, so that, that in the 40s, once uh, the electronics industry uh, became sufficiently developed, uh, pe people um, then took uh, Turing's ideas, um, principally, and uh, put them into uh, hardware. So, uh, you know, real computers. I mean, uh, historically, the, the word computer referred to a person, a person who computed, right? It's only, you know, relatively recently, the last one, half century or so, that um, the word computer uh, now unconsciously, automatically refers to a machine, you know, not, not a person, not a human being. Okay? So that's a sort, of, a sort of the background a bit. So, uh, well, you know, I'll keep Coming, uh, we'll talk about Turing a lot. We'll talk about Turing machines. You know what what is computable. Um, that's pretty much uh, the the nature of the the second uh, second part of these big three. Uh, personally, uh, well, because I have a more pure math type bias, uh, of of these three, uh, it's the second one that that there's my personal preference that I, I find more interesting than the others because it's more theoretical, I, I guess. Now, complexity theory is, uh, it, ta it takes those problems that are solvable. So, so this, in a sense, is a subset of this, okay? Because complexity theory deals with those problems that are solvable, okay? So that makes this one a broader category uh, than this one, because computability includes um, uh, all those problems that are not solvable. Right, that, that cannot be computed. So, uh, uh, so this, in a sense, is a kind of superset of this. Okay. Now, uh, complexity theory of of those um, the, of the set of problems that are solvable, you can divide them in turn into, well, let's say, 